When Will Ferrell's close friend Harper Steele comes out as a trans woman, they take a cross-country road trip to reconnect and reintroduce Harper to the country as her true self. People are instantly with this premise, with what this documentary is about. There's going to be phrases and words thrown out, whether it's woke Hollywood indoctrinating our kids, whether it's stick to comedy Will Ferrell, whether it's this virtue signaling of Hollywood that people uh, can be annoyed with. And I think in fairness, there's another element that isn't being a talk, which is the vanity project of this. I think that is something that I was worried going into Will and Harper was, is this movie essentially going to be a vanity project for Will Ferrell to display his allyship. And that wasn't a project that I was particularly interested in. What's fascinating about the movie Will and Harper, this documentary, is this documentary addresses all of those criticisms or perceived thoughts that people may have going into this movie. And I think it does it in an intellectual way and a really engaging fun way i had a lot of fun with will and harper so let's just talk about what i liked in this movie what i liked about will and harper is that this movie as described by the characters in it is a conversation about all the questions you don't ask a trans person which is essentially everything you're too embarrassed to ask about everything that you know you should not ask about in polite society That's what Will Ferrell is asking in this movie. And it makes for an engaging premise for a said story. And I think that's a really good way to frame it. It was just a frank, honest discussion about a way of life that most of us don't really understand fully. I would consider myself an ally to LGBTQ plus rights. And I can't pretend to know a lot about trans people's existence or everything that goes on with their lives and what leads them to those decisions. That's what this movie, it's not an educational, this is point A to B. This is uh, a lot of the stigma that uh, trans people may face or the decisions that lead them to this or the biological decisions that they feel right in doing it's it's not any of that in this movie rather it is just one person's experience how they were feeling what then led them to realize that's why they were feeling it and thus make the transition that's what this movie is far more interested about it's not trying to tell a narrative for a whole group of people rather it's just spotlighting one person's life and I think that's also really useful in this where the one person's life who they spotlight Harper she's a fascinating vehicle to spotlight in this and it's largely because she is a figure within the comedy world now we probably don't know her as well I can certainly say I didn't know her role in Will Ferrell's career she is a writer at SNL she ends up working with Will Ferrell our helps write some of the films like Casa de Mi Padre, but works on the Funny or Die stuff, does the Eurovision film with Farrell. Like, she is a writer uh, for a large part of Farrell's career. They have this close friendship. So focusing a feature around her allows that this character that we're spending so much of the time with is just naturally funny. And she's partnered with Will Farrell in this movie, who's just, you know, he's Will Ferrell. He's also naturally funny in this movie. So that dynamic is really fun to explore. And that really helps the movie kind of keep a pace and allow that, allow this movie to focus on Harper and tell an interesting story. Often the times with these vanity Netflix projects done by celebrities, I think often what happens is we don't really care about the protagonist that the celebrity thinks we should care about. And I, I'm specifically thinking of a film like Stutz, which is Jonah Hill's documentary from a few years ago about his therapist. I just didn't care about the character of, I believe his name is Phil Stutz. And thus the film was a failure. I find it fascinating that Harper, she was this figure in SNL in the late 90s, early 2000s, worked with Tina Fey, worked with Will Ferrell, worked with Seth Meyers, worked with Will Forte, all these SNL figures who also appear in the movie. And then 
20 years later as the pandemic comes across, reveals herself truly to everyone and how they learn to accept her for who she is and how they perceive their relationship with her, how they understand their relationship different, but they also understand that's their friend and that hasn't changed. I think that's a really heartwarming aspect of that movie. I think that conversation of that movie works to wonderful effects. This joyousness that it takes for someone to find courage to speak out and tell the world who they are adds a beauty to this film that really works in wonderful ways. And it's that recontextualization of a friendship. Then we get to see these friendships evolve as somebody now learns the honesty that someone else is willing to display from there. The documentary is then able to broaden itself and it allows us to go across country with these characters of Will and Harper. And through that, we learn that we have more in common with one another than we think. For instance, Harper is this character that loves basketball, loves shitty beer, loves going to dingy bars, cracking jokes with people, meeting new people. Like she is really this person of the people. She can make people laugh. She has this relationship just naturally with everyone. There is this natural comedic just energy that she has that really, you know, brings people together. And you get to see that, especially in the scene where they go to, and I believe the state is Oklahoma, they go to this conservative bar with Confederate and MAGA flags flying everywhere. And these character, despite like how it's framed to be, of course, is you think there would be differences. You'd think there would be a lack of understanding and maybe even open hostility. And I think that's how the film wants you to frame frames itself. And then when we go through the scene, we can start seeing some of those prejudices slip away as we all just start getting to know each other. And I don't necessarily think this is a representative representatives experience per se, because obviously there's an element of a documentary, right? There is the fact of these are people behaving in front of a camera. These are people behaving with Will Ferrell in a room. Like there is an element that I definitely clocked while watching this movie where I'm just like, okay, maybe it's easier for Harper to be experiencing this type of openness from some people because it is like they are, everyone on the screen is aware that they're on camera and want to present themselves in a good place. The film actually addresses that in a way that I found interesting, and it specifically at times pulls Harper away from Will so we can explore that dynamic and get to view the world more through Harper's experience in there. Of course, there's always going to be the camera there, and so the film can't fully get out of that. However, I think how it's portrayed in this movie does show the nuances of thought and how easy it is, for instance, to just laugh together. And then how it does it so well then is it's then juxtaposed with the ugliness that we know that can be in society that we can know comes from prejudice, which is there is a scene where Harper and Will go to the Indiana Pacers game. And Will Ferrell is, of course, Will Ferrell. He's this huge celebrity. So people, you know, recognize him and like people want to meet him and important people want to meet him, like the governor of Indiana who talks with Will real quick and Will explains what they're doing. And the governor is just there smiling. And then, you know, Will sits down with Harper and Harper is like, that person's a transphobe. Like that person is actively trying to take away my care and take away other people's care in the state of Indiana. And then you see another scene where Will and Harper go to a bar and I believe it's in the state of Texas. And you then see the internet backlash that comes with Will Ferrell hanging out with a transgender person and how people freak out about that on social media and the nastiness of the tweets. You really do get to see the juxtaposition of America in those scenes, the divisiveness, the fact that people cannot coexist in some cases and in some ways, and just the prejudice that people still face and how ugly and insecure it feels. And even, there's an incredible moment where Harper and Will are talking about some of those tweets, which are so over-exaggeratedly 
cruel and mean-spirited that they themselves have a kind of like hard time processing it. Like I believe it Harper, she says something along those lines where she herself doesn't really know how to process it. Like it's almost so stupid and cruel that like it doesn't hurt, but yet being told that or having to hear that anytime you're online, like that takes a weight to you. And it's like how hard and mean that is like there, that is the ugliness. And I think the film captures that in spades. There's other moments of this film where I think that doesn't work as effectively. There's a scene where Will Ferrell is crying in the car. And that's where I think the film can feel like a vanity project. And I think this scene in particular has a little bit more authenticity to it. And I think it has more to say about Will Ferrell perceiving his life and his fame and just not thinking about how something like that could then affect Harper, who is being viewed as the world in the world as something else, and the nastiness that can come with people leaving comments or anything like that. There is an authenticity in that moment. You don't know the moment that I'm talking about in the film. I don't know if it fully works for me, where it just it did kind of feel like Will Ferrell crying into a camera, and that that phrase that I described, like force allyship. Look how great of an ally I am. Like that certainly came to mind, even if I thought it was done in a more authentic way. It's just the nature of a film like this where Will Ferrell is front and center. It's going to have moments that it feels like a vanity project. One of the moments that I found so touching and just beautiful is the progress of accepting, I think is a huge idea in Will and Harper. And that's just, where we have been and where we are and where we can still go. There's this moment where the character of Harper talks about going to therapy and basically some therapist that she had trying to dissuade her from doing this type of care from, you know, because she doesn't understand transgenderism. She doesn't understand what this will mean for Harper And essentially, like, you know, Harper talks about that, like how painful that was for her to then seek help, seek therapy, and then have herself, like, rebuked for that, like, and how that put her further, I guess, into the closet in that way. And this idea comes back later in the film. Will and Harper meet a female therapist who early on in her career basically gave that same advice to somebody who was having those questions about their gender identity and how she essentially just, she didn't have the training. She didn't have the knowledge. She had the stigma against transgender people that she wasn't able to give the correct advice, even if she was caring and wanting to and how, you know, however many years later, She understood that was wrong and she she thought about that and you could see an authenticity in that way. You could understand that she had clearly thought about this and how she would wish she could do it different. This is what progress is and what we want progress to be. We want people to learn from their mistakes. We want people to essentially come to understand other people and accept them for who they are. So that scene, I I thought it was an extremely powerful moment. And there's another moment, and this is where I'll start wrapping up the review, where just how easy it is to love. I think that was a real big takeaway, I thought, while watching Will and Harper, which is we don't always understand each other. We don't know what's going on in our lives. We don't know what's going on in each other's brain for the most part. We may be struggling with things we do not know how to console or help the other person with or even how to understand that or fully empathize however what we can do is we can love each other and it's so easy and one of the moments that struck me with this is when we're with harper's true kids in this film and they both just kind of express like yeah we didn't fully know that our dad like this was what she was feeling However, when they came out and they revealed themselves, we 
we continue loving them because that's our father. Like we love her. And it's just, it's such a simple way that these two younger kids put it. I think they're both teenagers, but it's, it's the simplicity of it where it's just like, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Cause all that matters is she loves us and we love her. Such a simple thought. And so beautifully conveyed in a film like Will and Harper. So I really hope people give this film a chance. I really hope people understand that like, yes, this, this in some ways can be a vanity project. I think this film is so much more than that and sparks conversation. And most importantly, while watching it makes us just realize how easy the decisions we can make in our everyday life by reaffirming, by caring, by just being generally like not even fully thoughtful, just being self-aware enough to just like just show anybody the support of just how easy it is to call you know correctly call them by their pronouns like how simple of a decision that is in our lives to then convey to somebody else like that's what i think this movie does so well and so powerfully and i would really suggest people watching it with that all said i really liked will and harper i can really recommend this i think this is a documentary well done that shows a lot of emotional truths about where america is right now and how easy it is to love big positive review for me i'm going four out of five stars